Welcome tonight, amen, to uh, our Wednesday night service. Uh, today is February 2nd. We're already the second day in the month of February. And just uh, going to start clocking down this month, and it's going to go by fast. Can I get an amen to that? Uh, for those of you that will be watching this on, on our YouTube page, praise the Lord. We pray that you are following up with those uh, messages. If you haven't caught the first, second, or third part, of this four-part series, Christian Disciplines, I encourage you, go back uh, to the Activating Youth page, uh, YouTube page and look at uh, and listen and watch. Uh, if you uh, don't have time to watch it or it's a distraction to you, uh, you can go to Spotify and you could uh, click on to Activating. That's A-C-T-V-8 with a N at the end, Activating uh, Podcast. And uh, you'll see uh, podcast number 24, 25, 26, and tonight, uh, the 2nd of February, the last uh, part of this four-part series uh, is uh, podcast number 27, podcast 27 on Spotify. So tonight, amen, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a portion of scripture. We're going to take and break down, amen, uh, Titus chapter 2, uh, verse 11, through Titus chapter 3, verse 11. For this uh, part number four of this four-part series uh, in Christian Disciplines, amen, we're looking at a title tonight called, Who, Who You Looking At? Amen. And so when you think about that title, we went to part number one, fast focus. Number two, the long haul. Number three, a powerful proclamation. And tonight, amen, we're looking at who you looking at. And so when we think about this, amen, we're going to take this portion of scripture in Titus and we're going to look at, amen, what's being addressed into uh, the, the systematic uh, airing of uh, the Cretans, Cretans, amen, in Titus, amen, uh, in Crete, amen. The uh, Titus, amen, is written in, in the Isle of uh, Crete. Amen. And in uh, the culture of Titus, amen, we look at a culture that is even obviously present in today's culture. And so when we think about that, amen, I want to give you this image before we begin to read in Titus. Amen. Imagine a culture where uh, we think about this, amen, telling lies was normal part of life. Amen. Telling a lie was a normal part of life, amen, where people only looked uh, out for themselves, where people didn't get involved unless there was something in it for them. Lest you think this is only about, uh, lest you think this is the, only the culture of today, which sounds really prevalent for today, amen, telling lies is a normal part of life, where people only look out for themselves, uh, where people don't get involved unless it has something uh, as a huge benefit for them included. Amen. It was also the culture of Titus in, in, in Titus's day. Now, he's a young pastor, a young uh, disciple, amen, uh, of Paul the Apostle. And in his day on the Isle of Crete, amen, we see uh, this issue. Now, we're going to just read real quick Titus chapter 1. Uh, verses 10 through verses uh, 13. Titus chapter 1, verses 10 through verses 13. Amen. Now, this is a, a task that Paul begins to give to Titus. Amen. Listen to what it says. First, uh, Titus chapter 1, verses 10 through verses 13. For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision. Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not to for the sake of dishonest gain. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, <coughs> excuse me, evil beasts, and lazy gluttons. This testimony is true therefore rebuke them sharply 
that they may be sound in the faith. That they may be sound in the faith. Now, just real quick, amen, when we think about this, imagine a day like that. Now, uh, I know we're not going to get into uh, the necessity of what we need to do in our society, whether it's watching news or following what's going on uh, nationally, even locally in your you know, so many times, amen, we probably don't even know what's going on within our cities. Sometimes we'll bring up a, con, a, a, a subject, amen, when we gather together on Sunday mornings or in different periodic times when we come together to fellowship. And we'll say things like, hey, did you see this? Or, hey, did you hear this? And so forth and so on. And what happens many times is a lot of people haven't heard. They'll say, no, I, I didn't even hear that. And so a lot of times we're not paying attention immediately, like even as a husband, we don't pay attention to the needs of our wives or what's going on with our children because we're so busy and being encapsulated caps with uh, work and, and the daily demands. Uh, same thing with wives, amen, not paying attention to the needs of their husband or what's going on with the children. And, and therefore that's, that's, that's in, within our own sphere amen, of relationships. Then outside that with our family members, uh, with friends, with colleagues, uh, many times, uh, thank God for social media in some respect that we'll know what's going on with uh, people that we normally don't talk to every day. And so in that, amen, we, we find ourselves, amen, even into a realm of uh, a local, like in our local city, our local government, our state government, what's going on with us statewide, our, our national uh, level of knowledge, amen, what's going on across the nation. And so many times, amen, when we think about this, if you ever follow, we have these things called fact checkers. And, and, and then we have these issues that have come up with social media being blockers uh, of people that what they say are spreading uh, uh, non-truth, amen, in regards to what's going on in our nation, vaccines. COVID-19 and all these other things. So when you think about that, amen, we live in a society today where it is even almost common. Now, if you ever watch the White House briefing, briefings with uh, uh, the news uh, segments, amen, asking questions of the White House and the uh, presidential administration, our current presidential administration, uh, the spokeswoman for uh, the White House and our current Biden administration, uh, you'll see where there's a lot of dodging uh, to a lot of questions. Now, some will say, well, she did answer. Some will say she never answered. She just kind of went into a circle. And today, man, it, it is very common that it's easy, amen, to, to not be truthful with what we're saying. And we can also be uh, not directly answering, but circumventingly going around in a circle, hoping that our dodging and dancing around the truth might bring a settlement of gratification that a question has been answered. This issue that begins with Paul and Titus is so prevalent even thousands of years ago. And he begins this, amen, in verse 1 of, of, of Titus in chapter 10. And he says, both idle talkers and deceivers. Now, I want you to understand, these idle talkers, amen, uh, comes from the Strong's uh, Hebrew word, amen. Mara a lo ogosis, amen, in 3151, which comes from the Maratheos, amen, which is idle, useless, and the Legos, amen, which is to speak. And uh, so uh, Maratheo, lo, uh, Maratheo Logos, amen, is speaking that lacks reason and lacks worth, and that it gives evidence of an undisciplined lifestyle. That it gives, amen, evidence of an undisciplined lifestyle. The counterpart is men speaking as they are moved by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. So Paul begins to address this with, with his young disciple Titus. And he begins, says, even the idle talkers. And so in other words, they're, they're, the ones that speak, amen, that, with, with, that lacks reason. There's no basis. There's no meat, amen, uh, to, uh, there's no substance, there's no vitamins, there's no edification in what they're saying, 
and there's no worth. I mean, it's just, they're just talking. It has, it has no impact. It has no value. And, and it gives the evidence of the one speaking that they obtain, amen, an undisciplined lifestyle. In other words, there's no discipline in their life because the opposite of idle talkers, amen, are those who speak by the leading and by the direction of the Holy Spirit. And that has value, that has impact, and most of all, it has truth, amen. So imagine a world today where lying or speaking lies was normal part of life. Uh, I have this little video clipping, amen, on, on, on our YouTube page. It's with me and my son walking this afternoon. We uh, were uh, taking the RV to uh, have a follow-up uh, repair, amen, to a system that they installed in there with the uh, a stereo system, a navigation system, and a backup camera right before we made our trip in November. And we had some issues with it on the road and with blowing some fuses. And losing power, come on, somebody, the Holy Spirit is power, right? Uh, they wired it wrong, amen. What? How me correct that, because it's a good shop. Uh, they knew that I was getting on the road. So I want to just kind of use this as, as an illustration. They knew I was getting on the road. I actually just went to see that if I bought a radio, how much they would charge me to put in a radio, because it still had a, 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 a analog tape deck. And I just, you know, man, it's really hard, you know, to talk on the phone, especially with the outside noise, driving on the freeway and so forth and so on. And uh, so I wanted the Bluetooth. I wanted to be able to hands-free talk. But I also wanted to, to, to connect my phone, to listen to podcasts while I was driving, to listen to leadership messages, and then also listen to the radio. Well, just going in there trying to get, you know, a simple install done, amen, it turned into this big old thing, amen. Now I know, now later, now I come to find out that we're putting in a stereo, we're putting in a, a, a navigation system, we're putting in a, an amplifier for a camera all the way to the navigation in the back, we're changing out all the speakers, and so you get my drift, right? Well, they connected it directly, directly to the engine compartment fuse box, sub box, that powers the interior sub panel. Uh, fuse box amen and so they just went direct amen there was no uh fuse in there and so uh because the engine compartment is an older rv so it gets hot and we're driving thousands of miles uh literally one way you know 17 15 16 thousand miles or 15 1600 miles and so uh, hours at a time and so it blew a couple of fuses amen and so there was no filter there was no uh uh a uh, uh, braking uh, in the link, amen, if there was a short. Uh, and so in that, amen, we have the Holy Spirit as that fuse, amen, that helps us to guide what we speak and, and guide what we desire and, and, and really even uh, discipline our motives in why we are even involved in something. Because as we opened up, we talked about, amen, where where people only look out for themselves. You know, my son and I are walking down the street and you, you can look at that little a short video, amen, with that thought. And this was the thought that I spoke in there. And me and my son are walking, and, and, and it's peaceful. It's, it's a joy to see him out and about. But as we walked literally about a mile and a half, amen, there was nobody on the street. I mean, there's cars driving by, and people are doing their own thing, but there was nobody on the sidewalk with us. And so my son was able to enjoy himself. A lot of times, amen, because of his disability, people are, are in uh, low tolerance, amen, or I like to say, amen, intolerant, amen, because of the noises he makes, or, you know, he deals with a little bit of Tourette's, amen, and, and so uh, he stems a little bit, amen, and so they'll make noises, amen, and so they, they offend people, because we do live in a society where people are only looking out for themselves, their own comfort, uh, their own uh, ability to deal with noise, uh, their, inter uh, their interactions, amen, or, or, or like we just opened up, amen, uh, looking for something that benefits themselves, not that they lay themselves down for others, amen, we know that's a biblical term, and so in that, amen, when we have people packed out, my son is unable, I, I refuse to put my son in that environment because of the type of the environment that we live, amen, as well, amen, that people are not truthful today, amen, uh, and, and so, 
Uh, I can go on for stories yesterday at the range, amen, with new employees there and, and them not being truthful, amen, with these new employees, amen, on the way that they handle things, amen. And, and so it can go on and on and on. And so we find that that Paul right here begins to deal with Titus in the similarities that thousands of years later, we're still dealing with it today. See, some things never change in our society. In the context of such lax morality, God raised up his church. He raised you and I up, amen, to be the counter of that lack morality. Now, here's a, here's a, a side point, amen, a golden nugget for you. Amen. If you are part of the lax morality in this world, amen, then you're contrary to what God has raised up in his church. The church, amen, is supposed to be an example, amen. And when I mean church, I mean ecclesia. And ecclesia means that you and I, amen, comprise the body of Christ. We comprise the body of the church. We come together, amen, with our talents and our gifts and so forth and so on, and we comprise the ecclesia, amen, and it's through our lifestyles, amen, that we help bring forth the glory of God and, and, and to expand his, uh, his kingdom, amen, not by riches and not by growth, but by salvation of those who do not know Jesus, have not received Jesus, have not been forgiven by the blood, and received the grace and mercy of God, and in inherited the keys to eternal life, amen, that salvation, amen, is what we are tasked to be a part of, amen. And so we live in the context of a, 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 a lax morality, amen. Christians were called, amen, to be pillars of virtue in a culture that lacked virtue. Godliness in a culture that lacked godliness. Amen. Integrity, we're called to be the pillars of integrity in a civilization or a culture that lacks virtue. This, of course, amen, raised many challenges because the world was looking into the church, amen, thousands of years ago and to see how they responded and how they acted, amen, uh, to the things that were going on around them, amen. And so it's prevalent even today. People are watching how we're going to deal, whether it's COVID-19 and, and, and the safety of other people. I mean, many people attack the church saying, you know, Christians, they don't care. They're selfish. Amen. Don't they care about their fellow brethren and sisters, you know, or, or their countrymen, you know, get the get the shot. Amen. So that, you know, you don't kill other people. The reality is this. It's not so much that, that the caring for and the lack of there. Amen. But the reality is, amen. What's more important than anything in this world is that you, amen, and I inherit eternity through salvation in Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to understand this. If you speak that to a normalized individual, amen, a person who lives by the, 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 the flow of society, amen, then typically today they're going to be anti-God or anti-Jesus. Now, these are levels. Anti-God, meaning they're, they're atheists or they're just non-God believing. Now, they can know God and believe in God or believe there's a God that exists, but then they, uh, they, 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 they resist Jesus or uh, they uh, denounce that level of relationship, amen, or interactive, amen, level of relationship, amen, uh, churchgoers, amen, church, amen. Uh, people say, well, I believe there's a God, and, and, and yes, I believe that, you know, Christmas is about Jesus being born and, and the evidence of that, but they denounce or disregard church. I don't need church. I don't I don't need none of that. Those are only for weak people and so forth and so on. Amen. But we are the what God raised up as the church to be that which they are looking on. The world was looking on to the church and Christians in particular. What did they see? What do people in our world see when they view us as Christians? What what do people say and think when they view you as a Christian? Now, you have to listen to my video or, or one of my lessons, amen, that, that talks about uh, being a believer, a non-believer, a believer, a Christian, a disciple, amen, a servant, and then uh, eventually, amen, part of the fivefold ministry. Those are offices, amen, that we'll all grow into and mature through, amen. And so that's what we're looking at here. It's Christians, those who, who say they believe in Jesus, amen. And I'll say that again. Those who claim, those who say they believe. Now, 
I'm going to say this very uh, carefully, but very critically, amen, like uh, a, a surgical uh, uh, precision, amen. Christians are those who say they believe in Jesus. When I say that, amen, uh, just because we believe in Jesus doesn't mean we follow him. We, we say we believe in Jesus, but doesn't mean that we read his word. It's still today. Um, if you are a truck driver and don't drive a truck, then how can you say you're a truck driver? If you say you are a doctor, but you do nothing in medicine, how do you say you're a doctor? Uh, if you say uh, you are a student, but you do not go to school and you do not study or you do not do any homework or any lessons, then how do you claim to be a student? If you are a Christian and you do not pray, and I'm not talking about a one minute prayer for your food or when uh, you almost get into an accident. Uh, I'm talking, amen, that you do some type of devotion and I'm not trying to put legalities on what, you, what to extent, but what I'm saying is that you do some type of interactive prayer life with God. Amen. If you believe in Jesus, then you believe he wants to talk to you. You believe he wants to have a relationship with you. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. Amen. And then you read his word. And if you believe in Jesus, you believe everything that he speaks through his word. Amen. Our culture today is emphasizing on education over ethics. Our culture today still operates on emphasizing education over ethics mental development over moral development venture capitalism over virtue and character amen see in an illustration by croft pence he said this amen there is no paradox more tragic than high morality or, or high mentality and low morality there is no paradox more tragic than a high mentality and a low morality see we can't afford as believers or as christians to live at a level of the world and, and i'm careful to say that amen because the world operates on its own timetable it operates on its own flow system on its own systematic foundation amen and so we have to be careful that we can't afford to operate at that level, amen, that we use systems, amen, and we use, amen, the paradoxes of, the, of society and what society desires, amen. We need to reflect the disciplines of Christian ethics in everything we do, in everything we do, everything we say, everything we do not say, everything we work and everything we do not work. Everything we live by and everything we do not live by. Everything we speak, eat, breathe, see, hear, and believe in. Amen. And so in that, amen, the Bible teaches us that as Christians, we are to live a life of godliness and virtue in a world that is solely needs to view God's power in a human life. Amen. And so let's go to our scripture. Amen. Uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 amen this is under the the heading of qualities of a sound church and so uh, we're going to begin in verse 11 amen it says amen in chapter 2 of titus amen for the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly righteously and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Verse 15, speak these things, Paul tells Timothy, or Paul tells Titus, excuse me, in verse 15, speak these things, exhort, rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. Chapter 3, verse 1. Remind them to be subject to the rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, in verse 2, and be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. 
For we, in verse 3, ourselves were also what's foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But verse 4 says, But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Verse 6, whom he poured out as an abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified, verse 7, by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. In verse eight, Amen. This is a faithful saying that these things which I, which uh, these things which, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Maintain good works, not just one time, but to maintain them. Amen. Verse 9, but avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and striving about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Verse 10, amen, of chapter 3, the Bible says, reject the device of man after the first and second uh, 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 admonition. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. Amen. So I want to break this down because when we think about this, amen, there's a lot going on here, amen, that helps us to understand soberly and renewing, amen. And so when we think about this, amen, we come to this place, amen, where, you know, when we look at the word of God, amen, it helps us to understand that we are to just say no. No to the systems of the world. No to the desires, the lust, the flesh, and the ungodliness of what society looks as their foundation. As we said earlier, man, we emphasize on education over ethics. We look at mental development over uh, development of morality. Amen. And we look at venture capitalism over virtue and character. We look at, amen, I'll just to make money no matter what it costs and no matter what it takes over virtue and character, amen. In other words, amen, if it's not right, I'm not doing it. If it, if, if it rips off, steals, kills, and destroys, amen, somebody because of me being able to get a wealth or riches off of that, my virtue and my character will not allow me to do that. And I'd rather lose a deal, uh, an account, uh, uh, a project, and all these things because it's my character. I don't want somebody else to pay. I've been in a situation, amen, where uh, there, it, it, where it's been where it might even been voiced, amen, that somebody thought they were going to lose their job or somebody thought that they were uh, they were going to uh, you know, succumb to, uh, you know, I remember back, let me give you one example. When I was young, I wasn't married. I was single. Uh, there was a, a time, amen, that there were going to be layoffs at a company. And uh, I'll be honest with you, amen, there was uh, some other older guys. Uh, I was the young buck, so I was fired up. I had passion. I had vision. I wanted to prove myself, amen, so I was a go-getter, amen. Uh, I would, you know, jump down in the hole, start shoveling uh, mud and and, and, and dirt and, and work hard, amen, where well, I started to promote up. Next year, you know it, amen, there were guys there that had been uh, in the company longer than me. Uh, but they didn't put in the work as much as I did. I mean, I was maybe 10, 15 years younger than them. Uh, I was, you know, about 20, 21 years old. And... Uh, I, I just, I was trying to prove a name for myself, amen. I was trying to get my, my, uh, I was trying to move out of being wet behind the ears in an industry, amen, that was very competitive. 
And so when it came down to uh, layoffs, amen, I remember being pulled aside and being told, don't you worry about it. You're going to stay. We need you. Now, some of it may have been my decision on the fact that uh, if I was looked at uh, and being an individual that could do the work of two people, they're going to let two people go keep me and make me do the work of two people. Um, and uh, there was a, there was a, a gentleman, a man who, who, who spoke really uh, highly, a man uh, uh, in a good godly, not a godly, but a good, you know, good character. He was always trying to help me in here and there. I mean, he had he had like six, seven kids, and uh, they were in high school. One was getting ready to go to college. And I remember sitting around at lunch, and, and, and he was talking. He said, man, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. If I lose my job, man, uh, I, I don't know. So um, I remember I resigned. I, I said, you know what, uh, I, I'm going to move on. And so uh, I did that because I knew that um, they were good people. Uh, it wasn't their fault that what they were doing was the minimum requirement that the company required of them. Uh, we were just going through a bumpy time in our, you know, in the economy back then, at that one season of our our our, our nation, and um, and the company was just going through a, a a bad situation, and so they were just trying to downsize to stay afloat. But I knew that uh, my selfish ambitions to want to be made known, to make a name for myself, I superseded and overexceeded the norm amen and so yes uh, it was above and beyond to the extreme and they were there and they've been able to be there for decades amen was because they held it down and i knew that i wasn't going to stay there that was just a stepping stone for me uh, i had bigger visions and bigger and broader dreams and i was going to move on that company that field of work was not uh, my end cap, in other words, amen, I was a high school graduate, I was a, a college uh, attending uh, student, I was a college student, I was attending college, I had, you know, dreams and aspirations for the fire department, the military, and so forth and so on, and I was just 20, 20, uh, 20 years old, and um, these guys were there till the wheels fell off, they, they were raising families, uh, working that job, and so forth and so on, and so I remember that. And so I left, amen. So when you think about this, amen, that's the venture capitalism and versus virtue and character, amen. I knew that when it all hit the fan, they were going to stay. They were going to stay. And I wasn't. And so that's why I departed. Now, granted, decades later, I found myself in a similar situation. Well, they were younger people, amen, and I knew that when we got down, we actually shut down for almost like a month with no pay, and everybody scattered. I stayed, and I weathered the storm. Why? Because I had a wife. I had two children at home, and I was in it to win it. I was there till the wheels fell off. So, see, it, it, it goes around as it comes around, amen, and, and, and see, we live in a society, Dave, that we just want to step on whatever and whoever and however we can to just make our riches and to break through without any cost or consideration for anybody else. Amen. That happens in our relationships today. Many people end up, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of wedlock, having children, uh, never getting married or ending in divorce because of selfishness and, and greed. Amen. And immorality. Amen. Without moral ethics. Amen. And they're just in there for a, a substantial time until they really get what they want. Men, uh, so I've I known guys would date girls, women, amen, coming up in the years before I got married. Uh, guys would say, you know, I'm just dating her because I want to have fun, amen. There was no meaning a full relationship uh, investment in what they were doing. And they would spend months and years in relationships like that, amen. And eventually they ended up leaving. But the girl, I remember there was a situation where the woman, amen, really loved the, per the guy and, and wanted to spend the rest of life. But he had no ambitions in that area. Vice versa, I knew guys, amen, who were in love with the women, but the women were just playing the field. Come on, somebody, and so forth and so on. And so when we think about this, amen, in verses 11 through verses 15 of chapter 2 of Titus, amen, we see just say no. Just say no. See, in verses 11 through verses 14, we are told to have self-control. 
Look at them portions portions of scripture again. In verses 11 and verses 14. Amen. I'm using a, a backup tablet and it's just taking a long time. I mean, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and, and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. See, the Bible teaches us, amen, in verse 12, to live soberly. Amen. So when they look at that word, sofran ose, sofran ose, Strong's 4996, we, we break this word down in the Hebrew. It says, so, uh, sozo means to save. Sofran ose, so sozo to save and friend, amen, the mind. So when we live soberly, it's like our mind is saved. The way we think is saved. It's transformed. Amen. This word is a adverb signifying acting in a responsible manner, sensibly, prudent, being in self-control, and full possession of intellectual and emotional faculties. Soberly, emotionally, and intellect and intellectual faculties. I was just having a conversation with one of the brothers in the church. Uh, yesterday or, or the other day, man, and, and and so we were talking about this, you know, drinking to get drunk, amen. And and I used to be that one guy, amen, that would come home and, and have a shot of uh, uh, you know, whiskey or bourbon on the rocks, amen, to kind of calm my nerves, amen, to settle me down, amen. Uh, as I was coming up as a youngster, amen, as an early a young adult, amen. What well, happened with that? I wasn't intellectually, uh, uh. uh in possession of my faculties, I had a few drinks. So, the, in other words, amen, my emotions, amen, were no longer riled up, amen. So I calmed down with a shot of this or a shot of that, amen. And so we would say this, I'm just, you know, getting a little buzz on, amen. So now I'm calmado, amen. So I'm calm now. But see, I'm not owning my faculties at that moment, my intellectual, my emotional. Why? Because something has altered them. Come on, somebody. See, God teaches us, amen, to have self-control, amen. What does that mean? Now today, amen, I don't take that shot in any form. I don't drink that drink in any form. And so I still have those moments where uh, there, are, there are heated situations, just like the other day at the range, amen, with these new employees, amen. And so, uh, it was, but it was just a total misunderstanding. And so I had to humble myself. And I had to re-examine, man, was there something about me that just came off the wrong way? Did, did I not smile? Did I, uh, did, did I look too serious? Was I short in my first addressment to the individual? Or, or maybe it's just that the individual is so new there that he's just like I was when I was in my early 20s trying to prove myself able and capable and making a name for myself. I don't know, but the reality is when you are sober minded, when you're living soberly, those emotions are still there. Those active or reactive uh, actions of our lives and responses, amen, they're still there, amen. Of course, I want to get mad. Of course, I want to shout back or, or, or retaliate, amen, or respond back. But see, that's self-control. Now I owned my intellect, my mind frame. And I, I, I have possession of my emotional status. In other words, my feelings, amen, and so forth and so on. My, my comfort, amen, uh, or, or even my fears or infringement. You're like in my space, whatever, amen. I have possession of those, meaning that they're still there. There's no liquor. There's no this. There's no that that are taking control of those things. I have possession of them. And in self-control, I own them. I have control over him. Come on, somebody. And so when we think about that, amen, this first part, amen, is that in who are you looking at? Is Am I looking at you as the problem or am I looking at me? 
and what I'm doing. This is a Christian discipline that many times we wait until it's too late to try to self-reflect. I, I can't imagine how many times, uh, and, and I can tell you dozens and dozens and dozens of multiple times while I'm sitting and talking to people, uh, both husbands or and both husbands and wives, amen, both parents and children, where they go down the road later and they say, you know, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't think about that then, or or maybe I didn't realize that then, and so forth and so on. And so they done things, amen, and and maybe they acted a certain way with their wife, or or, or they acted a certain way with their husband, and, and now they're they're in conflict, or. God forbid they're no longer together or they're separated, amen, and they're sitting back going, you know what, my God, I, I, I guess I didn't realize how I was treating them or how I was speaking or how I was acting or how I wasn't taking responsibility. Come on, amen. And so the reality is we're always looking at the other person as being at fault. And I've shared this many a times. There have been times that I, I've had to share, amen, every time I lose somebody in the church, amen, where they no longer attend our, our ministry, amen, I've, uh, my wife and I uh, have always had this principle, amen, that we self-reflect. Oh, I can sit back and go, you know, they left because of this, and, and they left because of that, and they did this wrong, and I, and I sit back and I go, you know, oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? Was I was I not godly, or or was I too mean, or was I you know in, in, impersonal? You know, what I mean, you know, I have a tendency to to kind of draw back, amen. And especially now uh, when it's just me and my son, amen. I, I I have to think of my son first, and so many times that makes me non-social, amen. Uh, it makes me lacking sociability, amen. People invite me over, and I automatically say no, and so people are like, man, pastor never comes around, or pastor never hangs out. And so, you know, there are times, amen, that I got to realize, I mean, did they uh, feel the disconnect? Was I, was I not able to balance, amen, the needs of my son and, and, and my sociability or being available and, stuff and so forth and so on, amen? And so a lot of times I reflect, and, and yeah, many times, amen, I look in and I say, man, I could have been better at that or, or I could have done better at that. But, and, and there also there are times where I realize, you know what, I'm sorry, you know, okay, I did this as best I could. I did that uh, as best as I should have. Amen. And and frankly, amen, they just uh, were not satisfied. Amen. And we come to that understanding that we won't satisfy everybody. There are times where I sit back and I go, you know, they wanted this and that person was seeking this and that person was desiring that. And when I refused, what's my error? I refused. You know, whether they come, amen, seeking this or seeking that. Whether it's, a, you know, they, you know, people come in and they, you know, they want ministry or they want the building, the church. They want uh, other things, what other people have. And, and, and I come and my error is I didn't give it to them. I didn't give in. So then I have to ask God, God, am I, am I wrong? Am, am I still hearing that you want me here? Come on, somebody. Or was I supposed to leave and, 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 and render this? And the Lord will then correct me and then he'll speak to me. And so when you spend a life in prayer, uh, you, you kind of have those things, amen, uh, already pre, uh, prerequisite, uh, uh, prerequisites, amen, as God given you, amen. I had a situation uh, in, in 2020, amen, where uh, the Lord had told me, amen, within a year, uh, and he didn't give me a time frame. He just says, within a year, amen, or so, amen, uh, that uh, you're going to have a couple of people knocking on your door. And this is what they're going to be seeking. And this is what you're supposed to do. And so uh, as I tried to explain that, uh, I wasn't a great communicator in explaining that. And so maybe some of those relationships uh, did not end as I would desire them to have end. Get what I'm saying? So when we think about this, amen, we come to this place of self-control and being controlled of your emotions. Now, if I was, uh, you know, taking a drink, uh, there might have been things where I might have been like, you know, hey, man, you know what? I'm cool. I'm, I'm relaxed. I know the Lord told me to say no to you, but, you know, I feel bad. You know, I, you know, I had a drink and I, I don't feel, you know, on guard anymore. So, yeah, you could have the church. You could have the building. You could have my ministry. Go ahead and do all these things. And then the Lord will deal with me. Amen. But when you're sober minded, sometimes you, you just have to stand your ground. Come on, somebody. You just have to stand your ground. And so God tells us, amen, to have self-control. See, the exile of Crete was a cesspool of low immorality. It was a cesspool of low morality. 
the terms Cretan, amen, was associated with lying and scandal. Lying and scandal. Look at Titus chapter 1, verses 12 and verses 13. Go back there, amen. Chapter 1, verses 12 and verses 13. Listen to what we read this earlier, amen. Whose mouths must be stopped. Who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not to for the sake of dishonest gain. One of them, a prophet of their own, said Christians are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony in verse 13 is true. Therefore, rebuke them, correct them sharply, that they may be sound in faith. Come on, that's the word of God. So when we think about this, amen, uh, when the self-control, we can understand that in this region that Titus is being sent to, he's dealing with a, 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 a region of people who have low morality. I mean, if you think about it, amen, it was just a, 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 just a, 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 a group that lived in that level of understanding. Living for God in a culture like this was going to be a huge challenge for Titus. And this is why Paul is directing him in the way he is. That same scripture for you and I today helps us. Helps us, amen, to understand the greater purpose in our life. And the greater understanding of why we're here, amen. Can I get an amen? It, and, and to help us prepare for the challenges, amen, of an ungodly world. That we are to be the propellers of the church for a godly world, amen. We also live in a day when low morality is plaguing our society even now. And we are challenged as God's people to live at a high morality. Amen. Back in 1995 or the late uh, 90s, the early uh, 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 2000s, amen, it was an estimated number of Americans attending 12-step programs, amen, uh, uh, of 14 million individuals in the late 90s, early 2000s, amen. An estimated number of Americans at 14 million people in 12-step programs, amen. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. There's a difference, amen, of, of looking for mental, amen, elevation, and rather than moral elevation. See, we want steps, amen. We want these things. But they do not normalize it, change our life, amen. They do not con uh, uh, convert, amen, our, our injustices of sinfulness of our nature, amen, to live, amen, at a high morality uh, a position of, uh, of relationship with God. In other words, amen, we could still be, uh, ungodly, cursors, uh, 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 idolaters, amen, adulteresses, uh, immoral, amen, immoral, amen, in, in our sexual beings, amen, and so forth and so on. But we don't drink no more. Come on, somebody. And so the difference, amen, is, is that we stand, amen, as a pinnacle place, amen, as the body of Christ, that it's a totality, amen, that it begins within and it transforms without, amen. In other words, amen, I'm not going to steal from nobody. I'm not going to cheat nobody. I'm not going to lie about nobody. And I'm not about selfish gain, amen, at the cost of the disdain or destruction of another. And so that's the difference, amen, that we look at, amen, in this high morality that God challenges us to live, amen. That there is a danger for Christians to simply retreat from society. And let those who reflect a low morality experience the consequences of their sin. Some of us will just pull back and say, hey, man, they want to run off and jump off a cliff. That's on them. But that's not what God challenges us. God challenges us, amen, to, to spread the good news. And that's a Christian discipline. To be a sharer of what God is doing. However, Jesus didn't ask us to hide our light. Amen. In Matthew 5, 15, the Bible says, neither do people light a lamp. And put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. And it gives life to everyone in the house. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Amen. And many times, amen, we step back. We step back, amen, in a society, amen. And we allow people to come to their own choices, amen. Now, we can't, I'm not talking about controlling people. And manipulating people or, or dictating people. No, what I'm saying, and I'm talking about God has given us, amen, a standard as 
But Christian discipline, like we shared on Sunday, the powerful proclamation of evangelism, sharing the good news, amen, we are to share because we care. In other words, I want to tell you, amen, uh, the answer, amen, to where the world has no answer, amen. I want to share with you what an answer is where the world has no answer. We are not to hide from the world or shut them out. In fact, we are to put before them an example of godly behavior so that they might be drawn to God. As I live my life, amen, I pray that it's enticing. I pray that it's a temptation, amen, to the unchurched, the ungodly, uh, those in the world, amen, with no, amen, understanding or, or inheritance of eternal life, amen, who do not accept Jesus, who may denounce God, may denounce Christ, may denounce the church, amen, denounce the gathering of people together, amen, as fellowship. That my behavior and my example, amen, of joy and peace and uh, all these things, amen, that my high standard of morality, amen, that I seek to strive to achieve, amen, to please God, amen, may be a temptation to them to want to do the same in their life, amen. I'll I, I tell you this, amen, as a side note, there are many times I get together with men, and uh, uh, I am just grieved and heartbroken in many uh, aspects, amen, when I hear them talk about their family or, 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 or share, amen, uh, about uh, their wife, amen, and, and their jobs and, and what they have and what they don't have, amen. And I, I tell you, amen, uh, man, I wish my wife was not a nagging wife, amen, but I wish that she was here nagging at me, amen. Today, amen, I was uh, grabbing me something for, for dinner, amen, because when I'm in Pomona, amen, I try to get uh, Tony's dips, amen, there. And so I grabbed me a sandwich, amen, with their famous uh, roast beef and, and pastrami 50 50 across the board with some provolone cheese. Come on, somebody. Amen. And their French dip. Amen. Uh, Aja sauce. Amen. And, and, and the pickle and some their famous potato salad. I'm getting hungry. Come on, somebody. And, and so I brought it here. Amen. To warm it up later. Amen. Uh, after church. Amen. And I was in there. Amen. Uh, they always ask for my dad. Now, my dad is 73 three years old. My 73 years old. And uh, less than a month. Amen. Is going to be 74. My dad's still out there dating. My dad's still out there, amen, uh, uh, having a good time and enjoying life. Well, there was a gentleman, amen, that was in there. And uh, he's uh, just maybe about a year short of being 70. And, 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 and so we were talking. And the lady always knows my dad. And she goes, where's your dad? And I said, oh, man, I got to leave him at home. He always gets me in trouble with the ladies, you know. My, and, and so we're sitting there. And, and she tells this gentleman, she goes, oh, yeah, his dad. You know, he's 73 years old, still going on dates. Come on, somebody. But this is what she said. She goes, she tells the other gentleman, she goes, oh, he's single too. And I didn't realize that this gentleman had just lost his wife about seven years ago. And uh, he's out there dating like my dad. And and uh, and so I said, oh, okay, well, hold on a minute, man. I, I, I'm, I'm not single. And they both all started laughing. I said, you know, my dad's still out there dating. I call him, hey, dad, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm going out on a date. And I'm like, my goodness, come on, 73 years old. He's still Still getting out there, man, cutting up a rug and stuff. And, and so this gentleman, the uh, same way. And so uh, as I'm able to share, I'm still in love. Come on, somebody. And so many times, amen, uh, uh, we, we we take for granted for the things, amen, in which we have, amen. And see, I pray, man, that, that the love that I had for my wife and many people that knew my wife and I and, uh, and saw our marriage, amen, uh, I pray that they are tempted, amen, to to desire the same in God, amen, because our marriage was founded on, on God, amen, our, our family, our children, the things that we did in homeschooling our children and spending all the time that we had with our children, the same thing than raising my son and, and dedicating my life uh, to his well-being, that that, that, that that strikes somebody, that, that it entices, amen, a curiosity of, of a desire, amen, to, to live that way with their own children, and it just always breaks my heart when when men sit there and take uh, for granted or, or, or without importance, amen, in how we present to others. I want you to understand that. In other words, if I can walk away and think, my God, man, be satisfied that you, you, you have your wife and your children. Be satisfied that you have a job 
Amen. Be satisfied, amen, that your car is not broke down. It may not be exactly what you want, but thank God you have one. You, you get what I'm saying? Because the world has always seen that. And so I pray that my, my desire to live for God, amen, will be a temptation for others, amen, to walk the same, amen. I'm telling you, amen, there was never a day in the last uh, 24 years in the entirety of my marriage, amen, to my wife, amen, there was never a day that I regretted getting up and going to work, amen. And, and, and I'm not talking about because I, I would have money, because I loved, amen, uh, serving my family, amen. Uh, I never came home and complained about my job. I never came home and complained about my bosses. And let me tell you something. I've had some, some pretty tough bosses, amen. I've had some good ones, too. Come on, somebody. You know who you are. And I've had some tormentors, amen. And you know who you are. Come on, somebody. And so the reality is, amen, that today uh, I can still look at many of them, amen, as friends. And as of today, I'll still run from many of them. Come on, can I get an amen? But the reality is my wife, amen, knew that uh, uh, that I loved my job and I would communicate about the things that were challenges, but I never complained. And that's why I was very successful, amen. And I'm proud to say, amen, being able to walk away. Uh, you know, uh, during this COVID of 2020, more marriage counseling was needed, amen. More, 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 uh, uh, more intervention was required, amen, with both husband and wife being in lockdown and having all the children. Let me tell you something. We lived like that for 18 years of our children's lives, amen, for the majority of our lives, even when we were executives for AT&T Wireless, amen, in the cell phone industry, amen. My wife and I worked from home. We were virtual employees. We converted our master bedroom, amen, into an office, amen, because it had its own entrance door, amen, and it had its own bathroom, amen. And so we took one of the middle-sized rooms, and, and our kids took one of the other bedrooms, amen, but our master bedroom was our home office. And, man, you, you got to understand this, amen. 2020, if we, both my wife and I were still employed somewhere, we would have found it joyful, amen, to work. Right? You got to understand this, amen. So my wife retired, amen. We would spend about four years working across from each other, amen? And, and, man, there was no other greater joy than to flirt with her, amen, amen, play footsie with her. Come on, underneath the desk. Come on, somebody. Can I, I always click on this YouTube. Not made for kids. Come on, somebody. Amen? But flirting, I mean, my goodness, amen. And, and I tell you, man, people were being driven crazy, being driven crazy because they had to spend more time at home with their wife and their children. We homeschooled our kids all through, all through their education, amen, because we desired and loved being with our family 24-7. Come on, somebody. Man, I'll tell you, 2020 would have been a thing for us, amen. And we would have just, and as I did, I sat back and go, there you go, homeschooling your kids now for a whole year. Man, what a blessing. People are like, man, I can't wait till they go back to school and all these other things. And the reality is, amen, our children would have been able to be joyful. My daughter, amen, at the time, amen, when it came down to, to retiring back in 2012, amen, uh, we had a horse ranch, amen, in San Dimas. We had a couple of horses, amen, and my daughter says, you know what, Dad, uh, you don't get to spend the time with us. You're always having to pay the bills, and, and you're the only one working, but, Dad, I'd rather not have those horses or this property. I'd rather have you. Within a year, amen, I was retired and got to spend, amen, the next five years as a, a, a home with my children as they were in high school, amen, with my wife, and we traveled, amen, to Florida and back, and, and, and Ohio and back, and Cleveland, and all these other things, uh, Chicago, amen, we got to spend those five years together, who would have known that God would uh, call my wife home at the end of those five years, amen, and we had no regret, amen, to say, we could have did this, we should have did this, and everything else, come on, somebody, can I get an amen? So let your life be such an example. And I'm not bragging. Listen, I'm trying to share this with you. Amen. Not as a bragging, but I'm boasting in God. This was all because of God. Who are you looking at? Are you looking at your neighbor in his grass? Or are you looking at your wife in your own grass? Come on, somebody. Are you looking at what others are accomplishing? Or are you looking at God to see what you can accomplish? Can I get an amen? We're not to hide it or shut it out. We are to be an example of godly behavior so that they might be drawn to God. It is certainly is not easy as a job to live 
godly, in a society that mocks spirituality, but it's not an excuse to hide and not get involved. Come on, somebody. There is always the possibility that our efforts will fail, but there is still the responsibility to reflect crisis, challenging, and changing power to transform this world. And if it would require the ability for you and I just to say no to ungodly things in our society, to take a stand for righteous living in an unrighteous atmosphere, Paul recognized this challenge, amen, as he addressed this to the young pastor under his leadership, Titus here, who pastored a church in a very low morality of a society. Being a Christian means being responsible for our behavior, accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. And accepting that our Lord does not make us automatically good. It takes self-control. He gives us the strength and ability to see it and desire it. But self-control gives us, amen, the segue to acquire it. Come on, somebody. Being a Christian means being responsible. Christians, amen, should be the finest examples of self-control. That's why we started off with a fast. That's why, amen, we pray in the new year. That's why we started off with a series called Perspectives, and now Christian Disciplines, amen, and dealing with self-control. In fact, Paul states here in, in, in 2 Timothy chapter, 14, uh, chapter 2, verses 14, that we should even be eager to do what is good. I desire, man, I'm so hungry to do what is good. Can you say amen? When Christ dwells in our heart. There is actually a desire to do what is right. It is perhaps not as much as self-control as it is God is in control. Come on. The spiritual content, amen, of our lives should be the word of God. See, what determines what is good? What determines it? Who has the guidance? How do we know? What tells us to do and not to do? And I say this to you right now, amen. It is the word of God. The word of God is what determines what is good and what is not good. See, the world is operating at a, a fallacy, amen, that they can make up whatever they want, amen, that they can do whatever they want, amen, and whatever they feel uh, to be it, amen, it must be it, amen. But the Word of God tells us as Christians what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is not good, what is ethical, and what is non-ethical. See, there are some things that should not change through culture. And although culture may change, there are some things that shouldn't. And ethics and morality defined by God are things that should never change. Let me give you this example from Billy Graham in 1918. Listen to this. Amen. A compass is a narrow-minded device. It always points to the magnetic north. It seems that it is very narrow in view. But a compass is not broad-minded. If it were, all the ships at the sea, I'm an old sailor, sailor, a sailor in the Navy, all the ships in the sea, and all the planes in the air would be in danger. See, we must discipline our lives personally to fight any deviation from the course Jesus sets for us. We cannot be tolerant of any other course. To deviate is to sin. Think about that. A compass, amen, will always, no matter what direction you send it, will always refer back to magnetic north. We must be careful that we cannot be tolerant of any other course. We must be always drawn, no matter what direction we are leading or society is going and society is flowing, that we do not, amen, uh, be tolerant, amen, of any other course, amen, but back to that spiritual magnetic north, amen, meaning, amen, what is ethical, what is morally, amen, and what is virtually correct in God according to his word. To deviate from anything of that own standard is to be in sin. God's word, God's word will always stand as a, a barometer of Christian behavior, not culture, not society, not what's going on around us right now. That's why in the challenges that we've been in in, in 1919, 
2019 and 2020, 2021, and now getting into 2022, the things that are going on around us, amen, should not be that barometer that teaches us, leads us, amen, in our behavior as Christians. No, not culture, but the word of God. Because if we look at Second uh, Titus chapter 2 and referencing even to chapter 1, we see the things that are going on now here with us were going on then with them. With Titus, the Isle of Crete, as the young pastor Titus was leading the local church. The world may always think Christians are narrow minded with our with the way we think and our morality against uh, according to the word of God. But God will always be pleased with us as his people as we obey his word. There is, however, a responsibility for each of us as believers, each of us as Christians, to express God's word in practical ways. Amen? In practical ways. As I close with this, amen, social conscience. In chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, of Titus, amen, we see that God tells us, amen, to be renewed. Let's go back there to verses 1 through 8 in chapter 3. And I'm going to close with this, amen. We're done. 1 through 8, amen, in chapter 3, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing of all humility to all men. For we ourselves were once also foolish. We were also once disobedient. We were once also deceived. And we once, at one time in our life, before getting saved and finding Christ as our Savior, serving various lusts and various pleasures. I can say amen to that. But then I got saved. We once, amen, at a time in our life, were living in malice and envy, desiring what other people had. Hateful and hating one another. Haters are going to hate. We have once lived under those uh, guidelines and those principles. Verse 4. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, towards men appeared in Jesus Christ. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. No. But according to his mercy, he saved us. Meaning, by his mercy, we didn't get what we deserve. He saved us through the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hopes of eternity or eternal life. That's why I always say, amen, that we inherit the keys to eternity or we inherit eternity. This is where it comes from in verse 7. That being justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hopes of eternal life. Verse 8, this is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm constantly. That those who believe in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable not only to us as men, us as his people, to everyone as man. And everyone is his people. And that's why I say, man, I strive to maintain those good work. I'm not perfect. I mean, I fail every day and every moment. And if you sat here and watched me and you gave me a, a grade, like if I was, you know, in a boxing ring and whether I'm punching the enemy or the Satan, amen, and I'm getting punches or not, you know, they count every punch that lands and every punch that's missed. Come on, somebody. You would see the punches that are not landed. They look like I was throwing a punch, but I didn't connect. Come on, somebody. If you graded me, amen, like a like a driver's test, amen, you would be able to disqualify me on certain aspects of what I did not do correctly or what I did incorrectly. Come on, somebody. But I doesn't will not be defrowned or defaced or discouraged or even opposed to even striving for that. Come on, somebody. I'm a fighter and I'm a striver. And I'm an overcomer. So if I fail today, if I fail this hour, if I fail last night, if I fail this morning, then I'm going to get it and I'm going to keep winning it and I'm going to keep striving. Amen. You know, getting ready in the morning, trying to do whatever I got to do, everything that I, I task out and, and plan out. Amen. Some things are accomplished and some things I fail at. But doesn't mean that I don't try at it again tomorrow. 
I'm all, if I'm fishing at the lake and I don't catch nothing, guess what? We're going to be back there tomorrow morning, and I'm going to get that fish, amen? Yeah, I may have had it almost at the bank of the shore or on the boat, amen, and it got off. Well, the next day, I'm coming back to get you. Come on, somebody. I'm going to get you, sucker. I'm going to get you. You know, like that one song. I'm going to get you, sucker. I'm going to get that fish. Come on. And so the reality is we are called to strive for perfection. And I, I desire it every day. Not so that I can say, hey, I'm perfect, or hey, man, look what I... No, I, because God is in my heart and he's renewed, amen, the Holy Spirit in my soul, amen, I desire, amen, to please him. I desire to strive for perfection. See, in verse 5, amen, I'm going to close with this renewing, amen, anaakahinosis, amen, comes from Strong's 342, a combination of ana, again, Kainos, amen, new. The word suggests, amen, a renovation. Come on, somebody. Some of us need to go through a renovation. Like you remodel your kitchen or you remodel your bathroom or you remodel the decor, the, the, the decor of your house, new, bla new, new, new blinds, new drapes, so forth, new rug, new color, new paint. Come on, somebody. Some of us, amen, need to go through, through a process of renovation. Come on, somebody restoration right now amen i was in pomona amen i'm looking at the cars amen we got that chevy that 48 amen come on somebody i'm looking at our 56 amen and i'm, I'm looking at the process we got a an old uh, a honda 750 come on motorcycle and i'm looking at i'm looking at design uh i've been working with the rv just got it out of the shop again today uh looking at different things amen and i'm getting ready to renovate come on uh and i'm planning that out come on somebody you and i amen need to be renovated by the holy spirit and i believe he's got plans for you and i amen transformation some of these vehicles amen are going to be restored to its original uh, uh appearance amen some of them amen are going to be customized come on and some of them are going to be transformed into things that you would never think that they were ever meant to be come on can i get an amen and so transformation, renovation, restoration, this word, amen, uh, uh, renewing, uh, anakinosis, amen, uh, is a combination of ana, again, ka, uh, kainos, amen, new, amen, that suggests renovation, restoration, transformation, and a change of heart and life. A change of heart and life. In Romans 12, 2, it is indicated, amen, as a complete change for the better. Come on, somebody, tell that to somebody. A complete change for the better. Tell somebody, amen, if you're watching this on the video, amen, or listening to this, turn around and tell somebody, a change for the better. An adjustment of one's moral and spiritual vision. Come on, we fine-tune that, amen, like like having adjustments on a, on a shooting scope, amen, or some binoculars, amen, uh, that you just fine-tune it. Even like me, I have trifocals, amen. Uh, up close, regular range, and in far distance, amen? So I got three levels. And if I'm driving or if I'm doing something like shooting or I'm reading something, I'll go up to look at the bottom, I'll move down to look at normal, and then I'll look all the way uh, down to look to the top of my lenses, amen, for distance. And then I'll, I'll move it and I'll, come on, somebody, like I'm bobbing and weeping, no, but I'm moving my head to get that autofocus, that adjustment of spiritual and moral vision. Here is. The stresses that the work of the Holy Spirit is transforming our lives. Come on, somebody. Transforming our lives. The call includes a demonstration of respecting authority. Many times we'll sit around and people just disregard authority. Unfortunately, I may not agree with authority. Amen. But I respect the position that they're supposed to. That's why we can hold those in authority accountable for their lack of moral, virtual, uh, virtue, and character of uprightness. Amen? We can hold them accountable because we respect the authority that they're supposed to be serving in. Even when authority isn't necessarily Christian, we can call to obey it if it doesn't conflict with our walk with God. During the pandemic of 2020, amen, they wanted us to shut down the church. I said, I don't answer to you. I respect your authority. Thank you for your concern. But I respect God. 
And so during the whole pandemic movement, our church was open. Now, we didn't have attendance, amen, because many people were in lockdown, but it didn't mean that we're shutting down. Come on. I was here every day, every day, even in the first outbreak of, of that COVID in my son and my own personal life, amen, uh, literally a year ago, amen, three days before Valentine's, amen, I was dead sick all the way through the, the, the 12th, amen, of March, amen, for a whole month, amen, I was down and out, but we still had service on Wednesday. And we still had service on Sunday. Come on, somebody, without fail. Why? Because I answer to God. But I respect your authority. Thank you. I sat out there with a young police officer that transferred into our local PD of Azusa, California. And I told him, if you cannot arrest and you cannot do certain things because of this pandemic uh, emergency order, that's on you. But as far as me, we don't have an emergency order. Our order was given the day I got saved in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, amen, where the Lord said, go ye into all the world and make disciples. And we just studied that on Sunday. Can I get an amen? And so my authority has been long stated. For me, I've been serving God for well over 43 years, amen, and that authority is president in my life, amen. It's my conviction, and I will not refrain from it. Come on, can I get an amen? The all authority is given from God, and it, and it was given to control the unbridled expressions of sinfulness in the world. It is not a, a blind obedience that is called for, but it's a discipline for Christians to exercise. And it is the duty of all Christians to obey the authorities over them, as long as they do not require us to disobey God's word. Key point, disobey God's word. Not any other word. And I, I hate to say this, but not the Constitution, not the state Constitution, not the emergency order of any pandemic, but God's word. Amen. We respect it. We work with them to come to a resolution. But there's one thing. My people will come together and worship the Lord. Amen. How you do that and how you obtain that. I believe we're free to exercise that, but many times when we keep like that uh, narrow-minded uh, compass, amen, always defaulting to the magnetic, magnetic north, some of us come from different places. Come on, somebody. And the reality is, amen, I knew that one day, if even for one week, let alone one month, to shut those doors and say, I am closed then I knew the enemy would have won and God's word was prevalent in my life as a pastor of this church. And I knew we would never come back. Many churches have shut down and never reopened. There's businesses that shut down and would not reopen. There are people today, even restaurants, that have been able to try to reopen, but they just can't get back their mojo, their flow, their flow and go. Come on, somebody. their groove. Come on. It is the duty of Christians to obey them as long as we do not be called to disobey God's word. I close with this, amen. God's sovereignty works through all authority. God is ultimately in charge, not man. And God does not call us to just hang out until he comes, but we are called to be uh, getting busy serving until he comes. Amen. I'll show you this last illustration as we pray. And only because it's John F. Kennedy, I served on the John F. Kennedy aircraft carrier. And so I want to share this illustration with you. During his 1960 presidential campaign, John F. Kennedy often closed his speeches with the story of Colonial uh, Colonel uh, Davenport, Speaker of the Kinetic House of Representatives. One day in 1789, the sky of Hartford darkened ominously and some of the representatives glancing out the window feared the end was at hand. Quelling a clamor for immediate adjournment, Davenport rose and said, The day of judgment is either approaching or it's not. If it is not, there is no cause for adjournment. If it is, I choose to be found doing my duty. Therefore, I wish that candles be brought in to the chambers. Rather than fearing what is to come, we are to be faithful 
till Christ returns. Instead of the fear of the dark, we are to be the light as which we watch and wait. Come on, somebody. I'd rather, if something is, if judgment is at hand, then it's going to come. But if it isn't, I want to be found doing my duty. Amen. So they were trying to adjourn, amen, the meetings there in the House of Representatives, amen. And as the uh, 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 events, amen, began to uh, overcast the skies in Hartford, amen, the people started to think it was the end of the world, amen. But being found, amen, if it is, it is. In other words, if it is the end, then there's nothing going to stop it. Let's keep going. But if it isn't, then I'm going to keep going so that I'm found doing my job. When we must be engaged in this world, not only submitting to the authorities of this world, but showing the positive qualities of godliness in the process. Come on, somebody. Submitting to the authorities of this world by showing the positive qualities of godliness in the process. I told the police officer, I understand your concerns. And I talked to the city and I said, I understand your concerns. But see, you guys are, con you guys are, are constraints. Uh, your constraints, amen, are driven by the state authority. And I'm not under the state authority. I'm separation from church and state. In other words, you can't give me favoritism and I can't not submit to your ungodly request. You can't choose a religion. The church is separated because we are our own authority in this nation, in this world. What do you mean? We stand on the oracles and the pinnacles of the word of God. We're not diminished from the government. We are the equal parts of what our nation is comprised of under one nation, under God. And we stand for it to be the voice of that God. So just like a house of representatives, we have a house of churches. Just like a Senate and a Oval Office, we have the pulpit and the local congregation, the ecclesia. And we are to come together, amen, and believe, amen, to be able to be the voice of God's desire for his people until he comes. And we are to be the voice of that. And to light that candle, to be that light, to trim that light so that we sustain the long haul distance and that we can be that proclamation and that we will separate ourselves that from the things of our lives and and sanctify ourselves in times of fasting and prayer, amen, as a Christian discipline, so that we will seek out more of God and less of me, and that nothing else matters except for being in his presence and, and interacting in a relationship with our fa Father and our Savior. And in the very end, looking at ourselves as our self-reflection, as a Christian discipline, and making sure that we are a light into a darkened world, that we are, amen, a standard of seeking moral, virtual, and spiritual character on the foundations of biblical ethics and morality, amen, that are righteousness before God's desires for you and I, amen. Anything else to deviate that is to be in sin. And we're called, amen, to be transformed from that old sinful way into now a life that seeks to please God. I pray this message in this podcast, amen, uh, challenges you, amen, to take your walk with God to another level. These Christian disciplines, amen, have been powerful. You get these things down. We'll now enter the month of February, and we'll conquer this next year of 2022, amen, with flying aspiration colors, amen, that just give God all the glory and gives God all the praise. Can you say amen to that? Father, we come before you tonight and we thank you as we give you all the praise and all the honor that God, that you are worthy to be praised.